Hello, everyone, and welcome to Power Automate Tips and Tricks. My name is Rory Neary. I'm uh, I'm lucky enough to be an MVP, but that just means that my way of learning involves me explaining things to other people. I find that is a good way of learning. You can find me on Twitter and at, at Azure Rory. Uh, there's my LinkedIn. Just find me on Rory Neary and then the learning platform and my blog are at the URLs that you can see there. And I am joined here today by Paul. I think you are the next man up. Paul, I'm afraid I only got your LinkedIn profile, uh, but do you want to say a few words about yourself, Paul? Yeah, nice to see you, everybody. Um, my name is Paul. Um, I'm also a Microsoft MVP, um, and that means I spent a lot of time helping people out with Power Automate um, problems and solutions specifically. And it's a product that I think is just a, just a brilliant, brilliant tool. Um, so I feel quite passionate about that. Um, and that's all you need to know, really. When I when I when I'm screen sharing, I'll put up my link tree, and you can uh, I'll put it in the chat as well, and uh, you can uh, just access all my links, access my blog and my YouTube channel, and. Um, if you need to get in touch, please do, and I'll uh, do what I can to help you if you need anything. Super. So we've got one hour of learning. Now, when I I was thinking about, oh, you know, I, I thought to myself, what is a reasonable amount of things that you could learn in an hour? And I, and I kind of thought, well, hmm, in my head, I thought maybe if I learned five things in an hour, I'd be pretty chuffed with that. Uh, but I didn't know what other people thought. So I did a I did a Twitter poll uh, and I said, well, you know, if you were on a webinar for an hour, how many things would you like to learn? And I came up with uh, this figure here. Uh, Ninety nine people responded and most people said two to five things. So hopefully if we if we hit that, you know, two to five, we'll be making uh, a lot of people happy uh, and then nine, nine to ten seven percent thought that and maybe maybe they thought they should learn more things than that but hopefully we will we will be telling you i think in off the top of my head there might be 15 16 things that i'll cover and i dare say that paul you'll have quite a few things that you'll cover as well so we will see how far we how much can we learn in an hour uh, and do it in a in a way that's kind of repeatable now, the first thing I'm going to be doing is talking to you about JSON. So we kind of, I, I don't like to come in at such a high level straight away, but I kind of want to do it in a way that's a little bit accessible because if you can't get your head around JSON, then it really does prevent you from accessing the full tool set of Power Automate. And I say this because I only really started getting into it um, halfway through last year. So that's to my shame. I should know this uh, much more than that. Uh, and uh, and since I've done that, I've, I've found it exceedingly useful. And I just want to share that with you. Then what I'm going to do is going to move on to the sort of tips and tricks part of the session. And I, I'm then going to hand over to Paul to do filter and select on it. I had your face up here earlier on, Paul. And, and I thought, I, I just thought you were gonna say, why did you put my face up there? And I thought, oh, I'll just put a filter in that case. I like had the whole conversation with you about what picture I put up and then I, yeah. put, I put the filter up instead. So- No, I like the filter to represent I quite like the filter. <laughs> I needed a hand on it for the select. Um, yeah. So, so that is the session. Now, the fun thing about this session is that I've written an entire course for the session. And what I've done with it, I should put it into the chat, really. So uh, I'm just going to jump onto here. And if you if I jump in here, now you can buy it. So um, for the entire thing, what I've done is I've made the whole of the our automate bits that we're going to cover available today so you can you can play along with me and i'm going to try and put this in the chat here good so that's just gone in there and what you can then do is you can literally jump straight in so you can you can follow along or just look at the screen so what i'm going to do now is i am going to run through 
this material and we're going to run through it a bit like we're doing the world's fastest um, course on Power Automate. Now, where we're going to start with this is JSON. It stands for JavaScript um, Object Notation. Um, but it is, uh, I, I copied this from the internet, it's a text-based data format that's used to transfer, uh, store and transfer data. The bottom line is that Power Automate uses it all the time. And if we as developers or prospective developers don't really get, um, if, if we don't really understand the structure that we're seeing, then it's going to make our Power Automate lives much more difficult. Now, what I've got here is a, it's quite a complicated JSON structure. There are much more complicated ones. It's just that you won't see this structure very often. What you're far more likely to see is, is a structure like the one in the next lesson. So formatting and reading JSON. Now, this is a really, really, really important lesson. And uh, I've got a piece of JSON here. Now, I do have it in Notepad. Um, and I'll just pop that on screen so you can copy and paste what's in there. Um, and it's just a lot of JSON, loads and loads of JSON. And here's your big problem is what on earth is this telling me? What is this telling me? And essentially, this is uh, a list of cities and we'll, we'll see this later on. Uh, and what I do is I go in. Let me just check that it's not going to open a link in new tab. I use this all the time. I love using Code Beautify because I can now jump into here paste the values in that I've just copied. And what it's going to do is it's then going to make it look nice. And this is really, really important for us because what we can see is if we start collapsing things, we can see that, OK, I've got an object and within that object, I've got an array of data. Uh, and bear in mind that zero in the world of JSON is the first record, one is the second record, and so on and so on. So what we can see is there's record zero, and the first the first record is Aberdeen. Then we move on to there's lots of waffle in here. Then we move on to the the second item that is uh, Abertawi. I just got a list of of um, cities from. Uh, I've just a CSV file, a load of the cities, and I pushed it up into SharePoint. So this is a very normal structure if you're using SharePoint. Um, and later on, we will see that this becomes extremely useful to us when we're trying to understand things a little bit better. So that is a little tip. So you've got the data that you, you can repeat this in the same way as I've done it. Um, and you can also, I've said that you can format this here. You can format this bit here as well. I don't use this bit of it very much, as you can see, and it didn't even do it. There we are. I don't use this bit of it very much. There are, there are some formatting options on the left-hand side here. I think it might just be a bit of a delay going on. Um, so this ability to format JSON is extremely important to us. Uh, and so you've now got scope for you to just jump in and play around with that. Um, in the next lesson, uh, it's not even a lesson, really. It's just saying me saying, hey, Power Automate, you are going to see JSON all the time in Power Automate. Uh, and in the next lesson, I just talk about, you know, you know, you're going to see it in Power Apps as well, but it's not going to be quite the same. It's kind of special uh, JSON. So what you'll see is um, if the JSON record in Power Automate looked like this, then what you'd find is in Power Apps, it would look like this. So you notice that that the first name didn't have quotes on it. The um, so you will you will see a difference in structure when you use um, when you use it in Power Apps as compared to. Power Automate, and you can see that when it delimits this um, the field for the, um, which has got a space in it, it just does a single quote and so on. So you've got to be quite careful with um, with how you're using it. And there's a little um, there's a little bit of um, patching of records, so it shows you that you can do that. I'm not going to dwell on this too much because I really want to stick into the Power Automate element of the of the training today. So next lesson. This is I, I this is one of my most fun bits of this 
Now, I know that, Paul, when I shared with this, this with you, you weren't quite sure how to get to it and so on, which is fine. Um, what I'm going to show you now is I want to play with JSON. I want to play with Power Automate. I need to have some data. So what I've done here is I've got a download with a bunch of Marvel characters in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the download. It's going to download it onto my computer somewhere. There we are, Marvel characters. Uh, click on the save there. There it is down there. And I'm going to open up this. It'll do its, it's, do its usual bit of um, scanning of things. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this. And the reason we're going to open it is because I want to push this into SharePoint so that I've got a list that I can play with. Um, so there we are. We have got uh, we've got Excel here. And what I do at this point is I type in export because I can't be bothered to go and find it. And you can say export table to a SharePoint list. So I'm going to click on that. And what I need to do is I need to find a SharePoint list. And I'm going to shove it onto my learn site. Um, and I'm also just going to give it a name. Now I'm going to call, call it Marvel um, PA demo. And then I click next. And then I'm going to click finish. Uh, and what we'll see, I don't know if we get a link to see this in Power Automate. Yes, we do. So immediately we get a link to see it in Power Automate. I jump into there. It's going to fire it up for me and we'll be able to see that list. It's a truly inspiring list of about 20 characters that I just made up. So we've now got some data in Power Automate. That's nice because now we can carry on working with it. So what we have is the name of the person, the name of the character, which side they're on, how old they are, and are they alive or dead? So hopefully not too many spoilers here. Uh, I'm afraid that Odin does die. Um, I've actually, no, Odin's alive in this. So um, really I probably need to get my, um, uh, that may have happened a bit early. Well, let's just kill him off. Sorry, Odin, um, we might have to kill you off. Uh, I don't actually, <laughs> believe it or not, I don't um, use SharePoint that much. Uh, I'm going to jump into that record and I'm going to say, sorry, Odin, you're going to be dead. Huh. It's a yes, no field, so it's either either yes or no. So I'm not sure what's going on here, um, but I'm not too fussed about it anyway. I have data. That's all I wanted to get out of this session. I'm not really going to go on to this automate area here. Um, I would rather do it in the way that I'm most used to. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this little bit at the top here, um, which excludes the actual list itself. Uh, I'm going to jump back onto the course because I mean I know I know I've jumped ahead. So I've shown you that you can push the Marvel characters up. The reason why I didn't do the cities is because there's about five thousand of them, and it'd take a bit too long. Um, so what I'm now going to do is talk a bit more generally about using flow inside solutions. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go on to power, uh, onto power apps and I'm going to create a new solution. So I'm going to go new solution, um, P a demo. And I'm in my experiments environment, so I'm not really too fussed about what um, uh, what uh, how I'm naming things and so on. But this is my solution. I'm saying to you, look, if you're going to build flows, build them inside solutions. It is really bad for you from a development perspective not to put them inside solutions. It is very, very painful. And you do have circumstances where if you didn't put them in the solution in the first place, you may need to rebuild that whole flow. And, you know, and it can be quite painful. Paul, would would you concur with that? Oh, you're on mute, mate. I would absolutely concur with that. Um, I personally, just from my work on the forum, I've got loads that are not in solutions, but it's all because they're, they're just junk and just going to throw them away afterwards. But anything that's production is always in a solution. Absolutely. And, you know, and we could talk about why and so on. I'm just, but, but from the purposes of a learning point from this, just learn. You should put them inside solutions and trust us. 
it's the right thing to do. Um, but Paul, I would say that you've probably seen lots of examples of flows that are not inside solutions that have caused your clients problems. Not just flows, but all sorts of things, not inside <laughs> solutions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it has exactly. caused problems, yeah. So this is my demonstration of me creating a solution. Uh, I've created the solution. In fact, I've taken no time to think of the name. I probably should have called it something different, but I just want you to know that this is our starting point. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go new automation and go Cloudflow, and then we're gonna go, uh, it, I'm just gonna do an instant one. I'm not, I, I don't need to make a clever flow for the purposes of this particular demo. Now it's gonna give me the usual, uh, the usual, um uh, the usual option here where i can give it a name and so on but really uh, i can skip the whole lot or i could click click manually trigger a flow if i do skip it it's not a problem it's going to come up with the it's going to come up here um and i'm still going to have to have a trigger so i'm going to pop the trigger in there and and select the trigger. I'm not gonna do an input at the moment. I might do it later on. Um, and I'm gonna call this um, get Marvel characters demo. It's not a bad shout to name your flow at this point because flow will name it for you. So you may get a name that you don't really recognize and so on, but it's in a solution. So you're not as bothered now. I'm going to select save on this. It won't love me actually because I haven't got a single action. So I'm just going to pop an action in there and I'm going to say, I'm just going to put a, I'll do a get rows operator. In fact, I I'm going to just do a compose because that doesn't really do anything. Um, uh, click compose uh, and I'm going to put test in there, which is good enough for us to be able to save the flow. Select save and it's going to be happy. So if we hit the back button, we are going to be able to go to, um, we'll see this, it'll appear in here in a moment. Uh, so I think that if I hit the refresh, I don't know if I need a big refresh or a small refresh. I think it's going to be a big refresh. I should see that flow go in there. It would be a really good demo demon if it didn't go in there because that would be like my world would be shaken and I would then go have to go and um, hide under a table somewhere and uh, and so on. So we have got our flow. It's got a name and so on um, and we can go on to it. So just moving back to the course, so to speak, um, this is me showing you that exercises of putting a flow inside a solution. Um, this is just the same thing that we've done already. Um, and the next one, adding Cloudflow descriptions. Paul, would I be right in thinking that many of your clients don't put Cloudflow descriptions in? I mean, this... uh, probably 50% do. Yeah. And 50% don't. Yeah. And they're, to they're the same 50% that don't put them in solutions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's almost like a bit yeah. of a guide. You kind of like yeah. the, the, the warning signals are there. Oh, yeah. they didn't bother. They didn't think their work, work was worth actually putting a description of. Um, demo of how to work with flow. Now, bear in mind that some flows are more complicated than others. Um, but recording it this way is important. If you use these, I'm pretty sure if you use the center of excellence, it will actually return this, um, this information. Um, so it is... Uh, surprisingly valuable uh, information to be able to put that in there. I'm just checking this actually uh, actually comes in. And yeah, the, the experience of working with Power Apps through the, um, sorry, P Power Automate through the Power Apps lens is slightly different and can be a bit uncomfortable is what I would say. Now, I will show you, I love this, this next thing I'm going to show you. I'm not sure where it appears in the lessons and so on, but look at this, hey. Just remember for a second, we're in Power Apps, right? Right? And normally, when you select Edit, it'll just take you to the Power Apps way of editing it. But if you do this, Edit in a new tab. Interesting. 
But what really is interesting is the fact it doesn't edit it using Power Apps. It now does it using Power Automate. Now, for me, this is a big learning point because once it's in Power Automate, you get other options available to you. You get a slightly different navigation experience and you also have the ability to use the, the newer, there's, there's a uh, supposedly an easier way of writing your Power Automate cloud flows uh, and the settings are here, but they don't exist within, they don't exist within the Power Apps view of this. So if I do uh, save on that, then I would get the different experience, but I'm not gonna change it just for the moment. Um, I'm just gonna show you that. I'm gonna jump back to the lessons now, and I am going to hit next lesson. Just make sure we're working through this nicely. Ah, another favorite of mine, another favorite of mine. So what we've got here is, um, is, is the ability to write notes next to the things that we're doing. So I'm gonna say, here is a note about what we are doing. Now, this can be, you can put whatever you like in here and you can put lots of things in here, but it can be, if you go away from a flow for a month or three months, whatever it might be, this may be a little lifesaver for you to to know that that thing that you spent half an hour on has got some here is an amazing description so so this may help you in the future to understand what was going on in that flow um because you tend to find that flows certainly if the ones i write they tend to fail they fail, they fail, they fail, they fail, and then you fix and you fix and you fix and you fix and you fix, and then they're awesome, and then you just leave them. Um, but in those moments when you know what you were doing, it is important to write uh, write your notes about what was going on, because if it was worth spending a half an hour or an hour on it, it's worth writing a note. Um, Paul, you're so clever, you probably don't need to write them. And also, if the uh -huh. client... I write them all the time and um, I write them for the purpose which they're designed for, which is for writing the note like you've just described. Another thing I sometimes do is that if I've got an expression that I quickly need to change to sort something out or um, just test, sometimes I'll take the expression that I've written already that's in an action, yeah. paste it in yeah. there just so that I've got a backup copy of it, if you yes. like, a crude backup, yeah. and then yeah. modify my actual expression and then yeah. I've got a spare sort of in the notes. Brilliant. Yeah, I have seen people do that before and we can do that um, later on. Um, so so now we've we've done this thing on on flow action notes. This is another learning point. Do this. You know, this really matters. And quite often when you have a client that is saying, hey, I've got a problem with this flow and what you spend, you can spend a long time trying to work out what their intent was with that step. And and you can often find that even when you're talking to them, they can't explain what their intent was because they may have done it three months ago, like you might have done it three months ago. And, and it just, you do, I personally find that if you're going to write a note, if you do it at the time, it's a much better note than if you do it retrospectively. It does happen all the time. You know, there, you'll, you'll end up with flows that are a year or even more older. And that's why you need the description to first remind yourself what the whole thing does. And then the notes inside to, at least try and remind yourself what you were thinking at the time you built it yeah. or if somebody else comes along and does the same thing. So to, to a degree, you know, the things I'm telling you here are not complicated. They are not groundbreaking things, but you will feel pain if you don't do them. The next one is around something called scopes, which you don't have to use if you don't want to. So what I'm going to show you is a scope is just a call it a wrapper for your for these activities, uh, these actions that you have. So I'm going to put a couple of actions in here. I'm going to put another compose step because they're easy to write. Um, and I am going to I'm going to uh, test two. And I'm going to now put a scope in here, add an action scope. 
and I am going to give it a slight different name. Uh, I'm going to give it rename. It's always good to rename early rather than late. Uh, because sometimes you find that the later steps depend on the naming of the things earlier on and that can make your code look bad uh, and not very understandable so i'm going to say scope um demonstrate uh, i don't even know if it's putting a, a, a and for a scope it's not too bad because you don't actually refer to a scope anyway uh demonstrate uh demonstration of um usage um so we have a scope and i'm going to pop this in here i don't think i did it correctly by the way so watch what i'm doing here so that's not going to work oh it will work actually notice that when when you see the plus it's going to drop in so that dropped in now what you can do with a scope is you can then go hmm interesting copy to my clipboard uh new step uh my clipboard and then you can pop this in. So you've got another one. And notice that in the second one, you've got Compose 3, Compose 4, because they can't have the same name. Um, so that is a re that is a way of using it. Um, Paul, I'm aware that what people really do with it, as well as, so this now means we can collapse this flow down quite a bit more and make it look neat. We, can, we could possibly have a little note here about, oh, didn't mean to do that. I'm not going to put the comments. So I don't normally use those. Um, um, here is a scope uh, note. So as it, it really means that as a collective, the intent of these steps, these actions within the flow mean something because no one element of it means something on its own. So that's that's how it helps. Paul, I imagine you've got some far more developer uh of a perspective on this um no not really i mean i use scopes a lot particularly when there's a flow um, with a lot of actions or with a lot of branching just to make things look neat and tidy yeah. and it's nice to have that note there is there is a hidden use a couple of hidden use of scopes that are very handy um, so if you've got, uh, I don't know, let's say five or six actions that, that you want to share with somebody, as I often do when I'm helping people or on the forums, you put them all inside a scope and then copy as you did. Yeah. All that does is copy a bunch of JSON to your clipboard, mm -hmm. but you can put that then into a JSON formatter and paste it to somebody else who can then copy and paste it into their own flow. That's, so that's super goal. useful for that. Um, so that's really handy for just transporting little bits of a flow. Um, but you know, as you start to build more and more complicated flows, it will it will get a bit cumbersome to look at and to be able to collapse an entire section, which you're happy with. You know that bit works. Yeah. Um, then you sort of can close it off a little bit by putting it into a scope. And that's the thing that does that bit. And then you're sort of moving yeah. on to your whatever action follows it. But um, yeah, I use scopes all the time. And just, just just for that, just for collapsing and keeping things nice and organized and as you referred to making the intent um as clear as possible brilliant so i'm gonna rattle through these uh these lesson bits here so next lesson so we now we're going to start to get deeper uh, i'm not going to do this oh data filters i think we're going to run out of time for this um what I'm going to do, in fact, I've done this getting to a flow editor from the Power Platform Solution. Um, and compose your way to success. We will see this working later on. Uh, I'm saying, look, compose is cool. Use it. I didn't use it for ages, but it's brilliant. So start to start to get um, get comfortable with using the compose operation. I give you a bit of an idea of uh, a compose operation i'll do it again with you later on so what i'm going to do now is just going to do a a kind of whirlwind um exercise showing us getting data from the marvel data set which i know paul you're probably going to pick up on as well yeah. and uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of these steps here in fact hey look we can get rid of an entire um entire scope <laughs> that saved me saved me a few clicks i'm going to delete those bits there and then what i'm going to do is going to new step and i'm going to do get items get items 
because it's uh, SharePoint and I get items is the way of doing it. Then what I'm going to do is going to find my list. And, um, you know, if we had more time, we would talk about um, using um, environment variables to pick them up. But we haven't got that time. And I'm going to hit the drop down. And remember, we called it Marvel PA demo. So that's there. It exists. It's a real thing. Um, and then what I'm going to do is go to advanced options. Notice this thing has come up with a little error thing here. And the reason for that is because there is literally no filtering whatsoever going on here. But if, for example, I put a top count of sometimes, you know, there's only 10 things in there and you might as well say, well, I'm going to put 100 because it's just annoying having this little dot here because it slows you down when you're testing things. So that's disappeared. Uh, and then the next thing I'm going to do is go new step and I'm going to put a compose in there, pop a little compose in there. And what I'm going to do is compose. And then what I'm going to do is, well, what are we going to put inside this compose step? We're actually going to go to our we're going to go to the get items and the value of those items and then click save. And then I'm going to test it. So what's going to happen now is we are going to get a JSON object from the test operation. We're going to throw this into um code beautify so that we can actually have a bit of a look at it in a slightly more uh, a slightly simpler way of um working with it and then we're gonna we're gonna do what often happens in flows and that is we're actually going to try and like get to like a single piece of operate uh, of data so what i'm going to do now is I've, this is my compose operation and what we're going to find is I, I limited it to 100. So I know it's not actually going to limit it at all. But if I copy it into here. Then what we'll see is that we're actually got 23 items there. And really now what we're going to do is we're going to now drill into that idea of, well, how do we how do we kind of like. How do we get to how do we get to something? How do we get to Deadpool? How do we get to Deadpool? How do we, how do we know how old he is? You know, wouldn't that be an interesting thing to know? Well, um, and the 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 natural thing to do on that would be, OK, well, ooh, how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to do the get operations. And there's loads of ways of doing it, by the way. So let's let's do get operations. Um, and I'm going to go edit on there. I'm now going to go quite deep into this um, get items. Uh, I'm going to filter query and it's where title uh, EQ, because that's how you write it. Um, and I'm going to say dead. Cool. Now, I don't know if there's capitals in there or what. Duh. Deadpool. It's got no capitals. Uh, that's good. So we'll get back to there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click save on that. Um, now, that's going to return Deadpool to us, but we're going to see some very strange things happening soon and, and things that people quite often find. So I'm going to click test on that. Yeah, you know, run flow. Yeah, click done on that. So that's now going to return one record to us. It'll be a lot easier to read. So jump onto that compose statement. And actually, you can see we've now only got one. Um, we've only got one item that's been returned to us. Um, hopefully, it'll just uh, zap up here any second now. I don't know if I did it correctly. No, I didn't. I didn't save it correctly. Um, I'm kind of conscious of your time, Paul, because I want to make sure that we we you know, give you plenty of air time. And what you can Relax. see, here, what we can see here is it, it, we only got, uh, we've only got one item. Look at it. So, but that, but watch what happens here. We're now going to do, well, what an obvious thing to do. We're going to tell everyone about how old Deadpool is. Um, so I'm going to do an email. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to do send an email. Um, and I'm going to go Rory dot, uh, Rory at dataspinners.co.uk, send him an email and dead call info. Right. So what we're going to do in there um, and we're going to put age. Let's pop that in there. Now, what's going to happen when I click age? Paul knows. You're going to end up in the fly to each loop. <laughs> Has anyone had this? What's our problem? What is the problem here? Um, and our problem is we have an array 
Uh, an array is, we, we can see that we've got an array because it says in Code Beautify, but we couldn't tell quite so easily. Look at that funny little bracket just at the top there. That means we've got an array. Now, what I'm going to do is something slightly different is I'm going to jump across to my flow. I'm going to say, well, crikey, can we do something about this? I'm going to say, well, actually, in my compose step, I'm going to change this. And I'm going to say, well, do you know what? Uh, I really want to get, I don't want to get, the first item on here and this is my this is a trick here okay i'm going to copy over this control c i'm going to go over to the expression and oh sorry about that uh i'm going to do i'm going to go over to the expression and then i do control v now this still isn't right i need to remove this first um squiggly and i need to remove the at and i need to remove the squiggly bracket there and i'm going to click okay oh <laughs> what have i done wrong i don't think you've done anything wrong i think you need to press okay again uh, you haven't put the you haven't put the first in yet but now yeah, you did it right now. that's, that's correct. a bargain power ultimate that what this is going to do is it's going to return to us the same thing as what we had before now if we look at um the code beautify it's telling us the first item is our Deadpool thing. So now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to say, well, actually, do you know what? This is how you do it. Not like that, though. Do question mark zero, I'm going to hit update. Now, the difference between these is it's actually very different. So I include do a test on that. In fact, I'm going to get rid of this um, email because I'm not in. Mm, no, I'm going to pop a terminate in there, add an action, uh, do a terminate. And I'm going to pop a terminate in there. And I'm just going to say succeeded. And, and pop, popping terminates in, in midway through a flow is super, super useful for all kinds of situations where you're just trying to figure something out. And if this flow was a bit longer, you might just keep dropping that terminate down one step, yeah. one step, one step. And it, it's actually really, really handy. So if you haven't used terminate, it's well worth having a play yeah. with it. I was using it today, actually, just because I didn't want the rest of it. It was they had a load of approvals in it and yeah. and I didn't want it to fire, you know, so I just put my terminate in there. And um, so what this is going to do is it's going to run through that um, that exercise. Uh, and I don't know why it's doing all the signing. Oh, it's because of the um, it's because of the the outlook thing. Click done on it. Now, what we're going to find here is when we when we look at this compose statement, it's very different now, or at least from a perspective of. Uh, has that worked? I don't know if that's worked. Let me just check. Turn up a bit. I don't, I'm not. I'm not feeling the love here. But is, is that all right? I don't know if it is all no. right. I don't think that's worked. I don't think that's worked, and that's probably because I did a. I probably did a schoolboy error, uh, and that was that when I changed it, I didn't press update. No, you did. This is this happens to me all the time. So put your mouse over it. Mm -hmm. It says work now. Sometimes when you use that expression editor and just click update, it doesn't do anything. What I tend to do is update it, put it into my clipboard, delete it from the from the action, and then paste it in again. Okay. Um, but you did do it right, and I've I've been caught out hundreds of times by the same problem. So now we're going to do run flow. Click done. Um, and um but this time we're going to jump into this um um and click on the outputs and we're going to jump onto this um thing here and what we're expecting to see is it's no longer an array now the reason why that's important is because we want to send our amazing email which says how old um deadpool is don't we so we're going to go to this apply to each thing um i'm actually gonna I'm going to see if I can get rid of this, move it into there. No, it won't like us. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, I am going to go OK on that. I'm going to delete this step, delete this. Um, OK to that. Um, we are going to pop another email in. I shouldn't have done it that way, but anyway. Um, so I'm going to do uh, email. Send an email. And uh, off to Rory and right, date spinners that um, test. And what I'm now going to do is 
This time, this is the entire record. What I'm also going to show you is that we can actually, with the same idea, um, we can just bring one small element of that record. And that's where this idea of learning uh, JSON comes in. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to jump into this thing here, copy that, going to jump into here, going to go onto the expression over here, paste that in, but I'm going to return up to uh, the record itself and i'm going to bring out the age and the way i'm going to do that is going to go into here and i'm going to do question mark oops made a mistake question mark square brackets quote age small quote and then click ok and then that's going to return the age of uh, deadpool so what i'm going to do now is i don't need this i don't strictly speaking need this um i am now going to grab this and I'm going to pop another expression in and pop that in there. And I'm going to do title because I know it's actually title. Uh, and then I'm going to click OK on that. And then this time round, I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to use my compose to which I know is my age um, age. Um, so you could have done past JSON in order to get to this, but I didn't do that. I didn't want to. And, you know, I'm kind of just skipped a step. Um, just in the view of time and um, so the idea now is we should find that when we run the flow i'm going to remove this terminate statement but demo demons aside what we should find is that will flow will run and it will send me an, a, a super inspiring email which is um the age of deadpool and this sort of thing happens all the time notice no apply to each this is a good thing we could have put the whole thing inside a scope that would be a good thing we could have put notes next to each of the steps. That would have been a good thing. We could have renamed the compose statements because it's be uh, a bit better. And what we can see now is we did send an email. If we actually look there, we can see that the inputs were, it's gonna send it to there, test Deadpool. And but, but remember how cool a way in which we actually did that. And frankly, if everyone using Power Automate was able to do these things, their lives with Power Automate would be a lot better. Um, Paul, so what we've done is looking at the lessons, we looked at question mark for JSON levels. We just did that. We actually got the first item using the square brackets, zero square brackets. So we've seen that. And we've also seen replacing dynamic data with expressions as well. So I'm not going to take up any more of Paul's time by going through that with you. But, um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, I'm now going to hand over to Paul. I'm actually really excited about what he's going to present to us because I don't think I know it well enough. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand over to you, Paul. Well, hello, everybody. Um, so my, can, I, can you see my screen properly? I can see your screen. Okay. So I have got a very, very similar list, almost the same list, but I have got an email field. And I'm just going to show you some examples of flows, very similar to the one we've just seen, that sort of, um, they become more sophisticated, but also more simplistic at the same time. So our objective in this instance is we want to email all of the goodies who are still alive to warn them of an impending threat to the earth, another one. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five versions of this. And the first, they all work. They all work perfectly well. But um, the version one it is the least elegant of them all. And you'll see um, as it comes up. So we've got to get items just like we did, um, which Rory just showed. Now, this get items is going to get every item from this list. We'll see it in a moment. And that, as we've just seen from Rory, puts you into an apply to each loop straight away. Now I've got a compose here that just shows us the current item. So we can see this when we, when we run it, we'll be able to see it in the run history. And well, then I've got a condition. Yeah. Do you want to make your screen a bit bigger? Um, so that yeah. I just reckon yeah. that some people might. Um, I have got, might... Um, I have got a really big screen now and it's been a common problem. You can always just make it bigger in the um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. on that's, the screen. That'd true. be fine. Yeah. Hang on. Let me change this. I'll do a zoom like this, yeah? Yeah. 
Well, you can just do it in the top right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. That'll do. Perfect. So the first thing we need to find out is, is the character alive? And this is um, a condition step, which is here. So I'm doing a, I'm going to get rid of this one now because it doesn't do anything. So first of all, we determine if the character is alive and if they, if they are alive, then we need to figure out if they're a goodie or not. So if their side is equal to goodies, then we can finally send them an email. Now, as I said, this does work fine. And this is a relatively small list. So if I run this, it will be a perfect demonstration of what's good and what's bad about this. As we can see, it's going, the get items happen pretty quickly. And the output is just like what Rory was just showing you a moment ago. And there's our JSON. Um, go out of the way. And the flow is actually completed and it has probably sent me a bunch of emails. Yeah. So let's move down through this flow. So we can see that it ran 18 times. It ran once for each entry in this list. And if we look at the current character, the current character is Deadpool and he is alive and he is on the goodies team. So if we look at what happened here, we went down the if yes branch, he was a goodie, and then we get to, sorry, he was alive, and then we get to the goodie check and he was a goodie, so we went down to send the email. But that same check is going to happen over and over again. And you can see this apply to each is showing you which iteration I'm looking at. So I'm looking at the second iteration of 18 total iterations. So this time the character was alive, but he wasn't a goodie. So there was no point in sending him an email and so on and so forth. This time the character wasn't alive. Now there isn't anything wrong in doing this, but it is a mess to look at. And if the list was very long, it would take a very long time to execute. And it's also API inefficient. And what I mean by that is Power Automate has um, a notion of API limits. And each one of these actions is an API action. Um, and so if we had a list of 50,000 um, items, we, we might blow that just by doing one apply to each loop that was, was inefficient. So we're going to do the same thing again. And we're just going to get more and more sophisticated each time. So in our version two of this, we're still doing the normal get items. Uh, but then we move this into, I'm just going to add a new one so you can see it. We move this into a filter array. We know that the output of get items is going to give us an array as we just saw which um, when Rory demonstrated because there are multiple values in there and even if that list only contained one entry or if it in fact even if it contained zero entries you would still be getting an array back because that is the format of that of that list is expecting a, a, a table kind of data. So our first filter array action which I've renamed living I'm just filtering the output of get items. So alive is equal to true. And then I'm further filtering living to say side is equal to goodies. And I've got a little compose action here that just um, gives us some debug information about what's going to happen. So if I test this now, that's using the length, length expression, but I'll show you that in a minute. It'll make more sense. So the get items is exactly the same. Living will have broken it down to that only the characters that are alive and goodies will sub filter that to only the ones that are in the goodie camp. So if we have a look at this info, we can see the output of this. There was total characters was 18. The total living were nine. And of those nine, the living were eight. So now we can go into our apply to each loop. Let's edit this flow again. In our apply to each now, we don't need those conditions. We don't need to check if they were alive or if they were on the team goodies. We can just send an email to each one of those um, characters um, because that loop will never hit anybody that isn't already fitting that criteria. So we've massively reduced the load required to upon that apply to each. And we don't have those conditions that make it 
slightly more difficult to read. And there's nothing wrong with the condition, but in this case, we just don't need it. Now, one thing I want to quickly show you is building up a, no, sorry, it's in the next one. So if we go to version three, So this time, it's almost the same, apart from we've got our get item action, but we've just got living goodies. Now, here things are a bit more complicated because what I've done is used a filter action, but I've applied multiple conditions. So where alive is equal to true and where the side is equal to goodies. Now that looks like it's a bit tricky, especially if you don't understand the filter um, syntax. But what I'll show you is, is that you don't really need to know it. If we go back to version two, so we've got our two filters here, living and goodies. If I expand them both out and click edit in advanced mode on both of them, hmm. these are our two um, filters. So I'll take that and I'll take this one. That's cheating. And then all I need to do is type and and put another round bracket on the end, put a comma between them, and it's made it for me. So I can just now replace that with that, and that will satisfy it both. So I only need one filter to do everything that I've done. And there are lots, so as Rory showed, we could, in fact, I'm gonna show it in a minute as well. We could have just use an OData filter query and so you might be thinking, well, why do you want to filter it when you could do it here? Well, what we might want to do is get everybody and we might want to e be emailing the goodies to say we're under threat, but we might also need to email the baddies, to send out a communication to those to say, we're attacking earth at uh, half past four after we've had tea. So, um, so it enables you to work with the same set of data, but filter it down for more specific purposes. So let's go to version four. So all the way up to version three, we've still got our apply to each loop. And in this one, okay, so in this one, we do our get items and we've got living goodies, just as we had before with our multiple filters. Here we've still got our info compose that doesn't do anything. Now on our emails, this is a select action. Now what a select enables us to do is reshape data. So I could take the output from, in fact, let's just have a little, I'll show you why this is so useful. Select is one of the most powerful um, actions in Power Automate actually. But if we look at the output from a regular list, just like get items, which Rory's already shown a couple of times, this has got a lot of stuff in here. And we don't really get down to the part we're interested in until here. Now, if we look at just one record, which is from here down to here, that's just one record. And it comes with all sorts of information that is potentially useful, but a lot of times you won't need. And if it's a lot of data, by putting it through a select, you can make it much more efficient. So. To, to that example, I'll just, I'll just show it very, very quickly. So I'll add a new select here. And I just wanna trim this data down. So I'm gonna get it from my list of items. And I don't want all of this stuff. There's too much stuff here. So I'm just gonna put name and I'll put their title in and I'll put age. I'm going to search for that. Oops, I want that on this side. And then I'm going to put side, side. And all this is going to do is generate us a new JSON from the output of this one. And these are the key value pairs. So if I save this and run it, I mean, this select action isn't really going to do anything for now, but it will illustrate the point. So we've got our get items, which has got all that SharePointy stuff in it. As we can see, there's that one record. 
but the output of the select has only got these three properties, hmm. which can make subsequent actions much more quick to execute because there's less data to deal with. So what I've done, here we can see our total characters is 18. 18 was what came out of get items, and we've got our same multiple filters in one, and we've narrowed that down to eight. But then what I've done down here, this is another select action. Uh, this is another select action. This one's a bit different. There's no name value pair. If we go up to here, I had the the label or the attribute name, and then the value three times over. But what I could do is if I press this little button here, this goes into text mode. And I don't need to specify a key value pair. I'm going to make this effectively just a plain array, which is what I've done down here. And this is going to give me an array just of email addresses. And then I can use the join expression and I'm going to join the output of emails just with a semicolon. So if I test this again, and we see the output, and join will work, join is specifically to work on arrays. So you might have a comma or a pipe symbol or a carrot or whatever the thing is, but in this case, it's a semicolon. And so we've now got a list of all the email addresses that are belonging to the goodies and that are alive. So I could then go to my send an email action and just put in the outputs of all the good emails and I don't need any apply to each loops. I can just put that in there and send an email to all of the superheroes that are going to be helping us all in one shot. This subject comes up a lot on forums because a lot of people get caught. You get caught in apply to each loops, which take a very long time to execute and you're not quite sure why that is. And that's why the understanding of JSON is absolutely essential because it'll help you to understand why it's behaving the way that it is behaving. Um, and everything in um, Power Automate, every input and every output is always JSON. So for example, if you look at this info compose I've made, well, this doesn't look like JSON. It doesn't, I've just put plain text in there. But if I modified this flow, once it's finished saving, if I add a new action after this and use this funny thing that I very rarely use, it's called actions um, info. I think that's the one. It's a very rarely used. No, it's not right. It's uh, I'll show it to you without doing that because I've forgotten what it was that I was going to try to show you. So I went went a bit uh, off script there, but you'll see it anyway. If I go to this one info, it doesn't look like JSON. But if I click on show raw outputs, mm. it actually is a JSON. It's always JSON. Everything in and everything out is a JSON. Um, and so that's really just a quick, quick crash course in select and filter and how it can make things so much quicker. I was just checking I didn't do a version five, but <laughs> that's where we got up to. So... I hope that makes sense. Roy, did that make sense? Yeah, it's fascinating, actually. I, I would say that I don't use select, but recently I was working with a table with about 200, um, had about 200 fields. It was fast. And yeah. I didn't know what I was looking at. And loads of the field names sounded like each other. Yeah. And what I would needed to do was work with maybe, let's say, 10 of the fields. But the problem was every time I had to do something, I had to work with, I effectively had to work with 200 or whatever, and it was yeah. really painful. Um, I would definitely use that select option. Just on in terms of what you did in the end, am I right in thinking that there's quite a few steps in here that you didn't need in the end? 
in the that send that all goodies emails what did that need that needed your i needed the join so that needed the it's easier to see in the run history so if we look at my select which is that one called emails what that produces us it takes in that complicated json but outputs a very plain array of just email addresses mm -hmm. but i can't use those as the input for the send an email right. action yeah and so they're just they are just then joined with a semicolon yeah and then we end up with a nice with the, just a string actually not an array anymore just, yeah. a, just a string with all the email addresses in info we obviously didn't need um now i thought yeah i did an o data version where we didn't even bother with the filter but sometimes you need in order for you to demo yeah the select function you kind of needed to to yeah. so um, i did have a version five in fact um and this one i think does have so we've got a live eq1 now that doesn't make a lot of sense a live eq1 and that is because of a peculiarity in how i set this up so i've got this set to a yes no much like Lori, um, rory had and in this o data query that that needs to be a one in here or a zero one for true and zero for false so I've already filtered it here by saying a live equal one and the side is equal to the goodies. Now, if you can, if you've got the option, which you often don't have of filtering it at the source like that, then that is always the way to go because then you don't need those filter actions. Here, this is our info, we don't need that. And that, now we go into the straight into the select action. So we've got the email and then we go straight to all good emails. Now this, all good emails, isn't actually required. So I can just take that expression and go down to my send an email action and put that expression in there. And then I can do without that completely. Oh, run that one by me again. Join but Oh, yeah. You basically took it from all the way up the top, did you? Took it from here. So ah, okay. this, is, this is the select with the yeah. list of just emails. And now I've joined them via a semicolon right yeah yeah i get yeah yeah and there's a lot of that that happens in power automate yeah does that there, is, there, there are loads of interesting things i i mean i could spend probably two hours talking about what you can do with select but yeah. i think everybody would be long gone <laughs> um paul does that is that the piece of learning that you were wanted to let people know about today yeah um, I think the, I, I wonder if people have questions about this part of the session or any parts of the session for, so far, are there things that, uh, are there things that you saw that you, I mean, feel free to either put something in the chat or to, you know, um, to come on to the, you know, come on and, and say whatever you need to say, um, in this session because you've got you've got paul here who knows all about power automate um i it's very meaningful for, to both of us for us to be able to share something with you that will help you out um in the future um so were there any things that that you thought were good that you thought oh like for me select i will 100 percent use that I've failed to get is what I would have done, but yeah. magic would select and join there. Yeah. And we got Incinda uh, Sinclair who says V5 filter on the get is what I would have done, but the magic with the select and join is a revelation. I agree. The join is really cool. Really, really cool. Um, I I will definitely, it's a very clever way of, that's that you're getting into working with arrays. And I think it's really curious, Paul, but, you know, we call it low code, no code. Yes, you can do it with no code, but you also end up with no result in some cases. You end up with the first version of yeah. your flow. If you, by than... learning a bit of JSON, what you will do is reduce the time to where the penny drops. So I was recently helping somebody else out who was a Power Apps expert and knew a bit of Power Automate, and he was having a problem that his flow was taking, I think, 23 hours. 
And we managed to get it down to about 20 seconds and he was over the moon. That was really just taking a look at the JSON output and thinking, how can we keep cutting bits away? And, and, and in the end, we ended up with no apply to each loop. So absolutely zero. Yeah. Um, but he had an apply to each inside and apply to each, which is then it's like inception. <laughs> it, is, it is 100% inception. They look horrible as well. Um, uh, uh, so we've got some good comments in here. Sheesh um, from Gail, brilliant run through. We'll need to watch the recording many times to catch it all. Writing notes was far too slow. Thanks very much. So the plan with this is that I will put the, I'll probably put the recording into the course itself. I'll also put the recording into the YouTube channel. The reason for putting the course, the recording into the course is because it's easy to get to. Um, the reason to put it onto YouTube is because I want to share with people, but it's impossible to get to on YouTube. You'll search for it and you'll never find it. So there's, there's swings and roundabouts uh, in terms of how we deliver it. Um, Tanya is saying reducing steps in flow is always a goal. Recently learned how to use variables. My computer is about to die. Um, this could get interesting. Um, and let me just check. Yeah, back in. We're back in. Um, yeah, so Tanya, be careful with using variables because you have to have a very good reason for using them. Sometimes they can do particularly with apply to each is if you run them concurrently, they can be changing the value of the variable at the same time as running the other step. So you just be careful with how you use variables um, there, but all good stuff. I mean, I do use variables as well. So, um, and uh, yeah, Michael's got a drop as, as I'm sure plenty of other people do as well. Um, Paul, thank you so much for coming on to this session. I think we should do another one. I don't know what we'll do it on, but it will be similar, wouldn't it? Maybe we can save the universe in a slightly different way next time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, this, is, this is kind of like a pared down version of the session I did at an event. And the one that I did at the event was like the other end of the scale, which was, you know, completely turbo boosting flows by some quite complicated methods. But, um, there's so many different tips and tricks and angles that you can use on flow to make things more readable more comprehensible and faster to execute that it's always worth you know playing with to find out how you can sort of reorganize your flow to to make it the, the nice thing is once you've done that they that they execute faster plus they're easier to comprehend when you come yeah. back to them yeah absolutely so for those of you that do want to get to the recording, I will be getting it out there. I just would need to, I'll need to edit it essentially so that it's, you know, so that we've, you know, there might be some bits that we, um, you know, some bits a bit like me waffling now that I need to cut out and so on. Um, so I will, I will get to, to the point where I get to share that with everyone. But thank you so much for everyone that has uh, joined in this session. Um, I really want to do more sessions, so please let me know, probably not in this chat because it's going to disappear in a moment, but on LinkedIn, uh, even on Twitter, as to what you want to see next. Please, if you like this sort of thing, then sign up for the course because it's it's a kind of nice way to show your support for things, um, but it's also a good course, you know, for the sake of it, it's worth doing and it's um it would be nice to know that people found this valuable so um you know and you can also chat with me within the course as well um i call it a course in inverted commas some of the lessons are so short so thank you everyone and have a lovely evening paul we'll catch you up soon thank you for organizing rory no trouble at all cheers bye bye, -bye.